On today's episode of Fly Hacks, I'm back. And I'm gonna tie a fly called Dirt Helmet, and we're gonna talk about physics. I thought that the glasses would make me look smarter, especially if I wore them on the end of my nose like this. Um, that way it makes me more believable as a YouTuber and fly tire. Uh, and I'm sure the gimmick worked 100%. I'm sure everybody was like, oh my gosh, he's the coolest. Not really, I don't wear glasses. These are totally fake. Mic drop. All right, so you haven't seen me in a year. Let's not get into explanations on why I'm, uh, why I was gone. Uh, but I do want to say that this year, I'm not going to be like week to week, uh, day by day, any of that. I'm not going to make any promises. I'm just going to say that I'm going to be here randomly. Whenever I can sit down and make a video, that's when I'm going to be here, and that's how it's going to work for me. Without any further ado, let's talk about physics, because that gets me depressed. Physics doesn't get me depressed. Talking about social media makes me depressed. Anyway, so, you have hooks. I'm waiting for you to, to grasp all this and catch back up. Um, you, hooks are obviously a straight line and a curve. Now, I know this sounds very rudimentary for some of you. You're like, oh, I don't know where hooks are. But look at the weight distribution in a hook. All of your mass is back here. This is, even this little curl doesn't affect it as much as you think it would. It means that every time you pull this fly, when it stops, it's going to go if you don't have a mass there. Well, well I'll just put a, a little, one of those stupid helmets on the front, and then everything will be okay. <laughs> well, if you put a stupid helmet on the front, then it goes this way. The opposite of where you were going in the first place, and then you end up with this stupid, like, head jiggling, ridiculous fly. How do you manage this weight distribution? There's a few ways. There's, there's probably a billion ways to do it. One of the ways that I use a lot, and when I say a lot, I mean 90% of my, my streamers, my musky flies, my pike flies, all that stuff, kind of follow the same um, distribution plan where all of my mass or all of my fly tying materials shouldn't say mass are above the center point of the hook so the the, the center of gravity is like right there in a hook it's kind of just below the, the eye of the hook as you add resistance to the top now underwater its center of gravity is increased to above the shank of the hook which keeps the point down it's the same physics as a parachuter floating down from space. I shouldn't say space because they probably wouldn't float down from there. But you get my drift. Somebody jumping out of a plane in a parachute, all the mass is at the bottom, all the resistance is at the top. Bam. That's how I do, or that's how I manage most of my flies. And you'll see in a lot of my flies that most of the, the, the bulk of the fly is over this bend. And that keeps the fly from dropping every single time. It moves this into the center mass of the fly, so the fly just kind of folds in half a little bit, which is not natural either. The whole idea behind their helmet is to manage this in a completely different way. And by a completely different way, I mean buoyancy and mass. Two things. Buoyancy and mass. Buoyancy and mass. <laughs> the, reason I, the reason I wanted to add mass to this entire equation is because I wanted a fly that was neutrally buoyant. Now, what does that mean? Neutral buoyancy, that means it doesn't sink or float, or it sinks really slow or floats really slow, either way. Neutral buoyancy is the key to this fly. Neutral buoyancy and mass. So if it's neutrally buoyant and has a lot of mass, whenever you stop the fly, it continues going in whatever direction that it was going when you stopped. So, um, what's it, is it the third law of motion? Uh, an object will stay in motion until acted upon by another force. The other force is the water. And you have to add mass to uh, counteract that opposing force. So that is why mass is involved. So you have to use buoyancy to add mass to make it neutrally buoyant. Counterproductive? Absolutely not. Well, let me show you how to do it. Yeah. Der helmet. You're going to start off with a 
Gamakatsu B10S. Am I paid by Gamakatsu? No. Do I wish I was? Yes. This is a two-op version of that. We have Vivus 150 denier thread, and this is just your typical thread starting. You go forward and then wrap over those wraps to make sure that it does not come untwisted from the inside out. There's a little what? tick on there. No big deal. Okay, first thing you tie in is a, uh, this is orange. There's infinite color combinations for this fly. This is an, I'm going to make kind of a, kind of a fire tiger thing going on here. Uh, this is deer belly hair. Um, it doesn't matter what quality it is. It could be very short. It could be very long. Um, this part doesn't matter. You're not trying to buy the most expensive, best on the market stuff. Uh, and you want to get a chunk that's about, I don't know, no, it's not the size of the gap. It's a, it's a good, it's a good pencil sized amount. So you're going to tie this laces out. I mean, tips back. Yeah. Laces out, bro. So I'm going to flip this around. Do you want to stack it? No, does it matter? No. Uh, you do want to tie it about halfway in, so that's about half. Get this couple wraps. Make sure you collect all those threads. Some of them are going to fall off, I can tell you right now. I made three wraps, and I'm just going to spin this a little bit. It's not going to, it's not going to be too ridiculous. And it's not a whole lot of hair. This is the buoyancy of the fly. So I'm going to go in front here. I have this little nugget of uh, thread left over in front of the tying point here. And that's going to come in handy in just a second. So we've got a couple of strays in there. Those strays do not matter. In fact, oh, look, it fell off. Um, <laughs> the next thing I'm going to do is take a look at the front of the fly. You'll notice it's shorter on the sides because that's right, I've been pinching it. So you're going to lift this out. And you can use more or less. It all depends on how much buoyancy you want this fly to have. So just by looking at it, I can kind of tell you that it's a little shorter over here and it just seems a little bit too big for the purposes that I intend to use it. So I'm just going to trim this down right quick. I'm going to trim it a little tighter as I get toward the point on the bottom there. Watch your thread when you're doing this. I mean, don't watch it. Just don't cut it off. That's okay, whatever, it's a little lopsided on the right side. Uh, that means it'll just turn to the right a little bit more. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of just squish these back to bring them back into their, their position of um, rearward facing direction. Uh, this is this is 35 thousandths lead wire. You can use lead free lead wire. For some reason I don't have any lead free red, red free red wire on hand. So we're just going to tie this in, and I'm going to make uh, 10, 15, 20 wraps or so. You kind of know how it's going to go based upon how much hair you grabbed. If you grabbed a whole lot of hair, you want to add more. If you grab not much hair, you want to grab less. I'm going to cut this off toward you so you can see what I do here in the next move. We're going to make it a move. Pinch that in. I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to wrap it in between that first where I started the lead and just throw it down right in between there. And then I'm going to follow the lead up. Whee! Once you get to the end of the lead, so you, you just put all the threads inside the, the wraps of lead. Once you get to the front, this is when you build the dam. I think we've talked about this before in the H-bomb. I'm not sure. It's been a long time. So you just keep wrapping this until you get to where the thread is starting to go over the lead without you trying to put it on top. So you got a nice even ramp right there and then it starts going on top. Here, I don't care what you do. Just make sure you lash in that, that lead. It's not critically important in this zone. So lash in the lead, make sure you get it tight. I know I just twisted that one end over Try to fix that with some thread, no. Whatever, I don't care. Because uh, it's all so buried that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how pretty this part is. So, and the physics really don't affect it at all. It's mass. It doesn't matter what shape that mass is in. Matter, the density of the mass matters. So I'm going to grab about 
I don't know. Uh, let's grab a little less. 15, 20 pieces of flash here. Make them uneven. Okay, so we got a little bit of flash going back there. Uh, it's pretty... I should just leave it like that. Just kidding. Next, you're going to get some Arctic Fox. This is a Arctic Fox Zonker. And you're going to tie this in. Now, how I typically do it is I, you know, guess which way the hair is going. It kind of looks like it's going that way. I don't know. This one I'm just going to tie in and force it to go where I want it to go. So when you get the tip of this here on the leather, just pull all the hairs back and, and expose the leather end. I'm going to start, I'm going to just cram it down straight down and I'm going to grab the thread by this corner and then work it back. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So I just caught it with the corner and I'm going to pull it back there. Just to secure that in. You can add glue to this. I find that it does not matter because the hair comes off of the Arctic Fox before the uh, fly comes apart because you catch too many pike with it. So I'm advancing my thread halfway in between my tie-in point and the eye, the back of the eye actually. So this is where my um, Arctic Fox is going to go. That's pretty dense. It's not bad. Um, I wouldn't, if I had a choice, I wouldn't have bought this specific hair. So I'm going to push the thread forward with the leather. I don't know if you saw that. And I'm going to pull it backwards. See, I'm, this is perpendicular. I'm going to pull it back and pinch it down. Okay, so you can see this weird little overlap thing. Now what I'm going to do with the thread is I'm going to catch the edge of it. Notice that I'm not moving anything around to try to loop it over. I'm not catching it that way because that's the fastest way that your fly comes untied. This way it catches the entire wrap of leather. And you can't even see it but that's what it does. So now I'm going to take this tag end and pull it forward and then when I cut this off that will want to naturally go the same direction as all the other stuff. If you go up underneath and then cut that tag end off, it sticks forward and then it makes this big old lump in your fly and it looks really gross. Next, what, we're going, coming with the flash again. What a fantastic surprise. I love flash. All right, make them uneven. Make them just as long. You only want this fly to be a total of six inches. So um, measure from the front of the eye here to the back of the fly uh, to get your total length of the fly. You don't want it to be eight or nine inches. It can go down to like five, but you don't want it much shorter than that. You want it in the like five to six inch range because uh, it, it doesn't do what you want it to do if it's any shorter or any longer. Then you gotta play with the mass again. What is going on here? Why are you coming up underneath? Boy! I should beat you. You too! What's going on? Okay, there we go. Tie that in. Dun dun dun! I'm using a massive amount of thread, it looks like, but I'm not. Next up is this stuff. It is called Ice Dub Shimmer Fringe. I am personally in love with this more than any other material on the planet Earth. This fly was the reason that, uh, or this stuff was the reason that I tied this fly. Really light, really bright. It's just as long as bucktail, uh, and it's a little bit, well, I should say a lot softer than bucktail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, you'll notice that it's glued on the top here. I'm just gonna cut a slice in there. It's about 3 eighths of an inch wide. Um, like, I don't know, 11 millimeters. <laughs> uh, and then it's all held together by that chunk on top. Then I'm gonna drop this on top of the fly and use the, the glued together part and pinch it around the shank of the hook and then kind of use my scissors and my fingers to distribute it a little better here. Makes a nice little, little back going on there. 
and then wrap that and then cut off the glued part because you've got all the pieces securely in place and we don't need this for this part of the fly come on get off of there and then just kind of secure these things in it's ugly oh no it's ugly I can't tie this fly if it's not beautiful and Facebook and Instagram worthy in here by adding the mass in the center you have then created a situation where you're making the diameter of the hook shank larger which means that you can put more material on if you're wrapping it like this if you're uh, what the heck is going on there if you're wrapping it like this you're literally putting more material on than you would if you were just wrapping around the hook so this provides a thousand benefits and no bad side effects. We're going to tie this in the same way we tied in the other one. Catch the corner. Tie it in. Give me a little space here so I don't mash all the, the stuff I just tied in. So I'm going to make sure that I leave that. So you can see where my thread lays down right there. I've got a gap in between this and the flash so my hair doesn't mush my flash. No flash mushing. So now what else I've created with this big lump is this uh, taper, this big long taper. Now when you tie the hair forward, it's going to want to point more forward. So you're, you're actually adding bulk by uh, rotating this hair forward. You crazy. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And you can glue this in again, like I said before, it's, the hair is going to come off before the, um, fly comes untied. Wow, this one is really extra bulky. Get out of there. That's where I'm going to end up, right here. Man! And if anybody ever tells you not to lick your personal flies, the hair on your personal flies, um, tell them to go F themselves because there are enzymes that break down materials in your spit. But as soon as you expose those to the air, they die. So as soon as this thing dries off, it's all that bacteria that breaks down food particles is dead so whatever I don't know what their argument is but it's silly <laughs> alright so notice there is this giant steep ramp right there we're gonna cover that with two sections of this shimmer fringe so again I'm getting a piece that's about 3 8 11, uh, 11 millimeters or whatever and there's a shiny side and a not so shiny side that's shorter. Use the big long shiny side and put it down. Down. Let me move this thread back some. All right, then you're going to distribute that again. Making sure you're not like super twisted up in here. There's no major gaps. You're not trying to get on the bottom of the fly. The flash usually gets hooked up around the, the, hook, the bend of the hook and that always sucks. But you're going to take this front end and just flip it up. I'm not cutting it off this time. And then we are going to do that one more time. I crowded the head a little bit, but that's okay. It's a pike fly, not a pretty fly. So again, shiny side down, long side down. So you're going to get this all squared away here and then flip the second head back. You might have to... What's going on there? Might have to finagle with it a little bit if you crowded the head. But there we go. That's what I'm talking about. And then you wrap forward here. Whip finish. <laughs> Gotta pull that back. It jumped up on the eye there. 
Whip finish again. Really? Hang on a second. Get this hair out of the way. That fox is unruly. Probably in life as well. Get these nice and tight. And cut that guy off. And you are done. That's it. That's the entire fly right there. It's a very simple fly to tie. It has a lot of motion. And Pike friggin' love this thing. Um, I haven't really tried it too much for bass. Um, I just developed it last year, early last year. So these guys have now on the front because I folded that back uh, over the fly. It creates more resistance here, so there's no water penetrating through the through the fly itself. It's forcing all the water over, and there's a gap underneath here. You can see that gap where the hair starts and the flash ends, that gap exerts torque on the front of the fly. So it wants to rotate in this direction when you pull. So it's kind of driving down and, and pulling the back end up a little bit. And it just, it swims beautifully. It's got just, I love this thing. It's my new favorite fly. And it's only, it might be seven inches, this one. <laughs> But uh, you could trim the splash down if you want to. Typically, I don't. It doesn't matter. That thing gets shredded. It's a pike fly. It's a very fast tie pike fly. And it's very useful in situations where you're catching a lot of pike and you want to make sure that it's your pike are... are it, it doesn't matter if it tears it apart. So always move these in pairs. Don't... <laughs> Don't tie them singles because you'll fish a single and it's like the right color combination, like a yellow and orange on the Rio Grande or something, and you'll fish singles and then you'll be like, it shredded it and I don't remember exactly how the color combination was or it'll shred it prior to um, uh, the end of the day and you want to keep fishing it. So tie these in pairs. It only takes about 10 minutes. If you, I mean, if you're really cooking on them, maybe five, six minutes to tie one. But uh, it's, like I said, this is one of my favorite flies. You'll find that this uh, shimmer fringe comes in different lengths too. And I should let you guys know this. Usually it's not over six inches though. But there's some that are really long and some that are really short. Like this one is very long in comparison to this one. It's about an inch and a half longer. So just keep that in mind when you're doing it. It wouldn't it wouldn't affect the outcome of the fly at all. It's still going to look the same, uh, especially underwater. It doesn't really matter. This one's kind of, because it's like cut off, it's got this weird layer right there. It's, it's okay. But uh, like I said, these flies are designed to swim. They're not designed to um, catch an angler's eye. They're designed to swim. And there's, there's a lot of mass there in a very small fly that maintains its... Um, neutral buoyancy. So these don't sink really fast, they don't float, uh, they're just very slow. They're usually slow sinkers. You gotta tinker around with it though. The, you can't, when you tie one, don't be ashamed to cut it apart and do it again. I know Arctic Fox is really expensive, but once you get kind of the feel of how to tie them and how they react underwater, it's a lot easier. There's no, I can't tell you how much uh, belly hair to use because they can't touch your belly hair. What? <laughs> I, I can't physically see your belly hair, so I don't know how much you need to tie in. And that same goes with the fox. If you have a very dense fox hair that you're tying with, you want to add more mass to it. It's because the fox hair will keep it up. So just keep that in mind that everything's going to be a little different. You're going to have to tweak here and there. Your first one's not going to be perfect. It'll be on it. I mean, it might float. If it floats, you can just reach back here and cut off your uh, belly hair. Okay, so it's better that it floats than it sinks too fast. Uh, these things don't typically drag on the bottom. They're very manipulable, manipulatable, manipulable, malleable um, by your line. So your line will pull the fly down to where you need it to go and that's the idea and I do believe I have this fly in action catching some pike so stay tuned 
Well, it's 1.30, I think. Let me look. Yeah, it's 1.30 exactly. Um, slowed down quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, I didn't do this this morning, so. Yeah, it's hot. That's Pierce. I'm Dave. The fight is on. This is like, by far, this has got to be the greatest lake I've ever fished in my entire life. This is the closest to Canada that I'm ever gonna get. And uh, because, you know, in Canada they get like, 200 fish days out there. I'm like, four, what? <laughs> well, I caught five now. I'm up to five fish and you have one. He has one that could eat all five of my fish. Oh my God. That's huge. <laughs> That's huge, dude. Holy cow. That's huge, dude. <laughs> oh man. Oh, Pierce, come on. Get this fish in. You know what? I'm gonna tie my shoes while you're doing this. <laughs> That's a beast, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Just lean him, lean him over this way. The wind is not helping us. No, no, no. <laughs> it's making you fight this fish even more. Oh, come on, Pierce. Come on, get in, get this fish in. Um, nope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> I got him. Oh, get your hook out. Dude, that fish is huge. I just don't wanna, I wanna get her going again. Just grab her by the back of the head and move her head back and forth. Oh, she's good. Oh, there she goes. Yeah. yeah. I got slimed, I did not pee my pants. <laughs> uh, as soon as I got the fish out of the water, she kicked and I just hugged and now I'm slimed badly, so. That guy's the champ, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, Pierce. Such a big fish. Oh. Get up. I don't know how big that is. Dude, my heart is freaking pumping. Whoa! Get up! I'm trying to get her by the Whoa! <laughs> She's like, I've got energy. You don't, human. God. Oh! There. Oh my gosh! Choked that fly too, girl. Oh, oh you, you beautiful fat. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, that just made my day. I just smashed my Red Bull. <laughs> oh, God, fierce high freaking five. Yeah, November. Oh, there we are. There you go. Oh, Little guy. That's not one of his Little guy. Woo. He's strong, though. Ow, I just put my knee on a rock or something. Um, right now? Yeah. Uh, way better. <laughs> you might want to go forward a little bit too. Uh, okay. Oh. That's what, uh, your fly looks like after you catch a little tiny fish. This fly is going to be trash. It is, uh, look at Look at it. You got to tie another one like it. I'm going to tie a bunch of them, dude. 42? <laughs> I can't believe I want to call this by 45. Yeah, your fish was way bigger than this one. Come on. Come on, girl. Don't. 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 Ah. Okay. Now I'm hoping that she doesn't kick. And what about me? He don't want to that's a that's a hell of a fish, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Pierce, can you just set the
gosh, Pierce, get another one. I got pooped on. Look, I got the poo on me. You see that? That's that's pike poop right there. On my uh, fancy pants. <laughs> Holy cow! Oh my gosh. Uh, that's ten to the boat. A beast of a fish. That is huge. <laughs> Well, that's what pike are eating. That's a pike. Come on. I was just thinking about, I was like, you know, I should turn my camera on. Come on. Hey, I hate them when they're really small like this. Oh, I just barely had him in the skin. Look at that. Barely. Look at that. Beast. Whoop. Oh, look at that. Good fish. Uh oh. Oh, good fish. Good fish. And I was filming that one. I don't know if that got it on film because you made me look at the dust. <laughs> There's a dust devil. Oh, shh. Oh, you're right. Come on. Get up here. Good fish. It's okay. I'll give you a snossage. I'll give you a snorkel. Dude, just barely moving, and I'm like horsing this thing. Mm -hmm. How's that fish? Good, solid, solid, good fish. Let me get this hook out here real quick. Need some help? Uh, oh man. You got me back. You got me back. Look at all the blood coming off of my thumb. See that? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, girl. You got it in you. You're good. Oh man, she tore a hole in my hand. There's gotta be something cloth over here somewhere. Let's see it, Dave. Yeah. Look, see how it's pouring out of there? Yeah. <laughs> gonna have to take pause. <laughs> um, I just close this good? Yeah. Ouch. It's not bleeding as bad. Yeah, that's what happens when you put your hand inside a, uh, the mouth of a pike. Uh, it usually happens. But if you don't, if you leave pike fishing without battle scars, you haven't pike fished yet. Oh man, that's, that's painful. You could fish for a little bit. I'm just gonna sit here and cry by myself. Bring her up. <laughs> oh, there she is. Not too big. Not too big. <laughs> here, I gotta, I gotta show everybody at home your, your little yeah, pike. That's, little pike. That's Pierce's pike. <laughs> now that Snapchat fun time is over. <laughs> we haven't seen anything for a couple hours. And then Pierce is just like, oh, hey, here's one. <laughs> So whatever, my little camera battery died, so uh, I can't get any more awesome takes, and I think I only may have gotten one. So, and my voice is—I'm starting to lose it for some reason. I think I'm dehydrated. He was just a little guy. Come on, buddy. He was just a little angry guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my finger. Beast. <laughs> Beast. Dude, this fish is shredded. Look at his fins, bro. He is shredded. I'm gonna get one right over here. We're gonna come over to that. The entryway! Hey, everybody's got a Lake X. This is, this is definitely our Lake X. Ripped open my finger, dude. I mean, ripped <laughs> open my finger. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna do mm. mm -mm -mm. Need to apply here. It's down in the tongue. Here, you. Oh, you hold her. Hold her mouth. I'll get this. Oh, God. Put your hands those real good. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. Can't get the resistance. Look at that. 
How did, I, how did I know right when I stick to you, you stick to you? Oh, because it's inevitable. I know you peed. You got me back. <laughs> <laughs>